Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Wave at WPI checking in with 48425A Robo Shane, who's having an absolutely phenomenal performance here so far. Uh, coming through the season, definitely a season of improvement as they've gone through. A lot of it is just uh, great driver skill that's gone into this, but some really cool things on their robot as well, too. We'll be covering uh, different things from, of course, some zip ties in the drop down, but they got a great blocker, uh, awesome intake, a lot of cool other stuff that we're going to be covering. Let's learn more about the scene coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Eric, let's start off talking about this robot. You got the, the side piece with some zip ties, so I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. And then it's also a passive hanging mechanism as well. That's right. This arm, a lot of people think it's a wing. It's not actually a wing. What this arm does, it serves mainly three functions, right? We have these zip ties up here. These will touch the alliance bar during the autonomous period. That gets us to the auto win point. And we also use the bulk of this wing to actually dislodge the, the tri-ball from the match load zone during the autonomous period as well. And finally, this we, are, we can also use this for um, the, the hang on the on the bar. So we just rest this and it hangs that way. So it's a pretty useful piece that we haven't really seen a lot of similar ones. So how did you end up coming up uh, with that concept? And is that something that you added on into this event or did you have this throughout the entire season so no, far? No, we've had this for quite a while now. Um, you want to talk about the process of designing it? Um, yeah, I can talk about uh, designing it. Um, so originally, um, we didn't. this thing was just much thinner um, because we all we used it for was just getting the, um, the tri-ball out of the um, alliance zone. Uh, Another thing is, originally this th this um, uh, bar was also used to touch the uh, match load bar during skills, especially. Um, so originally, it also had zip ties coming down, but we got rid of that because we are uh, we use um, our uh, we use our flaps instead in order to touch the uh, match load bar instead of um, the uh, the arm. Um, and then looking uh, as we continue on this robot as well too, from the hanging mech, uh, you have a dual thread. I know we'll be talking about this as well. Why was it important for you to have two hanging mechs on your robot? All right, it's just about flexibility, right? Because you want to have more than one game plan. If your teammate can only hang in one certain way, then we want to be able to hang in the other way, just, you know, redundancy's sake. So that's why we have this hanger. This is, what, this is the more reliable of the two. And the way this works is pretty interesting, right? It's, it's a passive mechanism. So the robot will drive up into the alliance bar, the, the horizontal one, and this will lift up. These come in because there's nothing locking them in, but then when they fall back out, they're locked out here. So the robot would actually ride up onto the bar, and then once it's there, it'll just hang barely off the ground. They had to use a paper slider on like almost every single round last last event. Charles, let's talk about the uh, foldable intake here, uh, and then also uh, moving into the uh, angled wings that you had as well too. Uh, I know when you start the match, packaging is so important with your robot. Talk to me what's gone into it. Yeah, so at the start of the match, these this this arm of an intake can be folded in to reduce the length of the bot and these rubber bands can keep it held it'll pop out at the like when the match starts and this it's really simple but keeps yeah like that it's really simple but keeps the bot compact when it's needed and lengthened when we need to use the intake as well we have this angled wings on the sides, both sides. These angled win wings help us move the triangle balls easier across the barriers as it can push the balls upwards at the same time as forward. And these are really helpful whenever we try to cross the barriers with the balls. As we start to wrap up on this robot, Luke, talk to me about some of the iterations that have gone into this robot that we haven't mentioned yet. And one of the things, uh, your improvement from your last event coming to this one has been quite monumental as well, too. Uh, it can't just be the robot. There's got to be a lot of great just uh, math strategy that's gone into that as well. Yeah, of course. So originally, this robot, um, right now, we have a uh, six-motor drive um, on the bottom, uh, six 11-watt motors, um, uh, 360 RPM, 3.25-inch uh, wheels. Originally, um, we had a uh, four-motor drive, um, and we also had uh, two motors that motor shared um, with the catapult. So as you can see here, we only have one motor um, on the catapult, just right there. Originally, we had two, um, and they were shared with the drive. However, the thing is, if we wanted to have a six-motor drive and a catapult at the same time, we could not do that. So, um, so we had to use a PTO, which we just found to be unreliable. Um, and it's just a kind of a hassle to switch in between six motors and four motors during a match. Um, so we had to change that. Um, 
as when it comes to uh, match strategy, um, uh, is, this year is about being flexible mostly because in previous years, like spin up, the strategy was relatively uh, the same uh, across matches. It was just shoot discs, then get the rollers, then expand. Um, whereas here, you have to be very flexible. Uh, you it, you might have to cross the side when the auton starts, and um, you have to um, you one person may start shooting, but then someone may block them. So someone maybe your teammate has to sub in for you shooting instead, um, or. Uh, um, you are intending on match loading on the right side um, because that's where all your teammates are. But you know that side is uh, there's two robots there. You have to match load on the left side. You have to go over and have all your uh, drive team members run over there as well. Um, additionally, um, yeah, again, like I said, you have to be very flexible. Um, every second counts. Like at the end of the match, um, you don't want to hang too early, for example, because we made that mistake in previous events and that really costed us. But now we learned that. Um, Every, like if you have like a few seconds left where no one else is doing anything, just quickly rush back and just fire off a few match loads. It, it can make a huge difference. Um, uh, it can make a, yeah, like I said, it can make a huge difference. Um, and it can really swing the the tide of a match. Well, as we're recording this, by the way, you are currently top twenty in the world in skills. Yeah, uh, we are. Got it here. Congratulations on Thank that you. as well too. Uh, is there anything from a skills uh, wise that you've really improved upon in that standpoint too? Um, skills wise, uh, mostly what we did is uh, we just mostly fine tuned our auto. Because um, originally our autonomous was relatively unreliable. Um, at home, actually, but prior to this event, it only got around like 150, 155 maybe. Sure. But now at the event, it actually got 171, which is a, a huge surprise to us. Um, we still have one driving attempt left, so we'll see how that goes. But currently our driving, our driving score is 172, which isn't bad, but it can definitely be higher considering our autonomous is so good. Um, but uh, the skills, like I said again, mostly just was fine tuning the auto and uh, just more match practice, or match practice, driving practice, it really helped. Yeah, I think an underrated part of skills really is like the way you're loading the tri balls onto the, uh, the robot because ours, our loading mechanism for skills into this puncher here requires a very, very precise like placement of the tri ball. We have to take into account the angle of it just to get the optimal launch and that ensures that the spread is kept tight so that we can like push them optimally into the goal. And like, that's a big thing. We've spent a lot of hours just practicing the way we've been doing that, especially for our autonomous runs. And that's I think that's helped a good bit to increase our like score over the season. Well, Robochine looking absolutely phenomenal here. At, you know, we're filming this on day one, but currently in the top eight for that. Also very high up in skill, so we can't wait to see how you do. I know you're looking for big things at this event, so we can't wait to see the results of that, but good luck here and of course the rest of the season. And thanks for taking time. Tell us about your robot. Thank you. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.